Hello, thank you for joining us for part two of our three-part series on friction heating during braking. Here we will cover model setup and kinetic energy verification. To get started, we will look at some of the prep work used in this setup. To create the proper rotation in our model, we will utilize a tabular acceleration input based on a half sine wave. We are doing this to allow for a target velocity of 524 RPMs to be reached with the smoothest transition to free rotation by minimizing the derivative as the change in acceleration approaches zero. With our final velocity and our rotational inertia, we can estimate the kinetic energy within our system at the time of free rotation. Here we predicted a total Ke of 591.98 kilojoules which again is within 1% error of the value calculated by mechanical. Moving ahead, we can start to look at the setup of our model. First, we'll look at how we set up the physics and which components have thermal degrees of freedom and which don't. You'll notice that the inertially significant components have only the structural degrees of freedom as the altered densities change their thermal properties. All other components have the thermal DOF on, as these will be affected by the frictional heating. Of note, within the details view for the thermal bodies within this analysis is the fact that we've changed the thermal strain from program controlled to weak. This is because we are mainly focused on the temperature change or thermal component of this analysis and not so much in the stress and strain created due to the temperature changes. To add to the thermal portion of the analysis, we have added convection on the rotor and convection on the pads. Additionally, we have added some radiation on the pads. Of note is the fact that these thermal boundary conditions are active for all time steps of the analysis but only take effect when the temperature of these components is higher than the ambient temperature. For structural loads, we utilize the joints defined earlier. First, we apply the tabular acceleration shown by the graph and the tabular loads on the right. Notice that the input time, or the graph in red, ends at 0.1 seconds, which is when free rotation will occur. Next we have the force loads on the brake pads, shown here as the two joint forces. During the ramping up of velocity, the first one tenth of a second, no force is applied. Then over one one hundredth of a second, a force of 50,000 newtons is applied to each pad. This will be sufficient to allow for the stoppage of rotation within the four seconds given for this analysis. Lastly, we have the solver settings, which break up this analysis into five steps. We use small sub-steps for one and two, which break up our acceleration input, and for step three, which is the application of the stopping force to the brake pad. Steps four and five bring our analysis up to the end of four seconds with gradually increasing time steps. For each load step, we have time integration on with structural and thermal effects. Due to the large amount of RAM available, we use the direct solver with large deflection turned on. To set our transient solver settings, we use a command snippet with the TN, TRN OPT function set to the full method with the NMK or Newmark method of integration. You'll notice the backslash NERR command, which is simply used to allow for an additional amount of warning messages to be issued without stopping the solve. Before running our solution, we can actually right click and insert on our solution information and add trackers to look at changes in different variables throughout the solves. Here we have added a total deformation, a temperature maximum, 
and a temperature minimum, and specifically important to us, the kinetic energy, which we use for verification. Looking at our kinetic energy, we can see that we have an exponential decay down to zero, which is showing that the rotation of our rotor has approached zero RPMs within our four second time limit. Additionally, looking at our global temperature maximum, we can see that within our model, temperatures have increased beyond the ambient value up to a maximum of 217.44 degrees C throughout our analysis, showing that friction heating is working and we're adding thermal loads within the model. Of note here is you'll see at around 0.1 seconds when the brake pads are applied, there's this steep increase of temperature until the pads make complete contact and we start to see steady friction occurring at the contact surface. From here you'll want to go to part three of our three-part series, focusing on post-processing results. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.